the effort underway by this administration to roll back rules, the thing you have to remember, because you won't be intimately involved in these things, are, are really a couple of things. One is that rules are really hard to do. I started working on the Clean Power Plan uh, about two years before I became administrator when I was working in the air programs. That's when we started roundtables. We did hundreds of meetings, because in the United States you can't finalize a rule unless you have a robust public process. And we started it way before we even proposed a rule, way before. And we continued as we ran through the finish line and beyond. We actually based it on something that is not political. It is called science. Facts, documented facts. Climate change is not a political or partisan issue. It is an issue of absolute importance to all of us. Energy efficiency makes absolute fiscal sense. It's what the market is rewarding in states, in cities, in towns, and businesses. You have red states and blue states. You have governors who would probably rather choke on that chicken than say the word change after the word climate, and they're all in on renewable energy. You know why? It's cheap, and it's getting cheaper every single year. And it's not just solar anymore. Wind is amazing. Geothermal is kicking off. There are ways in which we have solutions today that when I was talking about climate change 30 years ago, I would have cut off my right arm to have. So if you think that the United States is all about what's going on in Washington, D.C., then go hang out there for a while. Stop thinking that we have shut down everything because the federal government is not working in our best interest. Because you have now probably in the order of 3 million people who are working in the clean energy sector today. You have 1.2 million people working in the energy efficiency sector in the United States today. You have solar energy firms that are flying in terms of their job growth in wind. You are not seeing that same kind of excitement about coal jobs. And in fact, even as much as the president has tried to rejigger the system at the federal level to make coal more successful, it is simply not happening because it's been challenged for 40 years and it is just going on that same trajectory. So while I absolutely hope and pray that we get some assistance for those who are losing their job, that shouldn't stop us from celebrating those jobs that are being created. I honestly believe that if we want to make climate change real, visceral for people, that we have to connect it to health. That has changed the way in which we've thought about the environment ever since EPA came to be. And we've connected it with direct public health impacts, which climate change does cause. There are 1.1 million people, by recent estimate, that die prematurely in India alone from air pollution. Where is that air pollution coming from? It's coming from vehicles, it's coming from coal manufacturing, it's coming from unclean, dirty cook stoves. These are not monumental problems for us to solve. They are solutions that need to be broadly accepted and understood. We can do this if we start talking about the immediate public health benefits of the climate actions that we're dying to have India and other developing countries do. We know that by 2050, it is predicted that we will have 9.6 billion people on the face of the earth. Two thirds of those people will live in urban areas. Three quarters of those buildings haven't even been built enough, and we do not have a system of agriculture that is able to support 9.6 billion people effectively. We have to spend money even without climate change. So why don't we think about sustainability, not just climate change? Why don't we begin with a healthier world, engage and broaden the constituencies who are willing to take action instead of fighting with one another like climate change is some kind of a partisan football? It's not. This is our future. This is our children's future. 
We cannot let it be played in a partisan debate as if it's not real and it's not something that we can tackle together.